Welcome to Cricket 22, the new generation of cricket. Whether you've played Big Ant Studios cricket games in the past or are new to us with this game, we highly recommend you watch this tutorial through to get yourself up to speed on all things cricket. When batting, you'll see a screen like this. In the top right, the field radar shows the location of the various fielders. Using the left stick, you aim your shot, which will be indicated by the aiming wedge. You can try aiming anywhere, but it's a good idea to try to hit the ball away from the fielders and be aware that the kind of shots you can hit effectively will also depend on where the ball's being bowled. This marker shows where the ball's going to bounce. Based on this indicator, let's try and hit this one through the gap in the fielders highlighted. Aim your shot into the highlighted area with the left stick, then use the attacking shot button to hit the ball. To time the shot correctly, press the button as the ball gets close to the batter. OK, let's go. OK, you've got the timing down. Just remember that you want to direct the ball to the right part of the field. Let's try that again. Nice. Great start. All right, let's try and hit it a bit further. We'll try to hit a boundary using the aggressive shot button. Aim in the same area as before. Let's go. Not bad. You just need to press at the right time to get a successful shot. So let's try that again. Awesome work. Not everything can be hit for a boundary. Sometimes you'll need to play defensively to avoid getting out. Play this next one with the defensive shot button. Defensive shots are best aimed back in the direction the ball's coming from. In this case, it's going straight. So aim your defense straight forward. Nice defence. Sometimes you won't be able to hit all the way to the boundary, so you can score by running between the wickets. Press the run button after playing a shot to begin running and press it again to queue up a second run if you've hit the ball far enough. If you think you haven't, you can cancel a run using the cancel run button or use the sprint button to run a little bit faster to make up the distance. Nice work. One way of getting out is through the LBW rule. If a player gets hit by the ball in a position where the ball would have hit the stumps if they weren't standing there, then they can be given out to LBW, provided the ball meets a few conditions. Now, this is a little technical, but it's one of the most important rules to understand in cricket. For an LBW to count, firstly, the ball needs to pitch inside the line of the leg stump that is, to have it bounce for the first time in this area. Next, it needs to hit the batter in line with the stumps, unless the batter didn't attempt to play a shot, and then be projected to hit the stumps. In most matches, your team has a limited number of chances to review an umpire's decision if you're judged out LBW, but you don't think it's met these requirements. Try this out for yourself. Watch the following delivery and then decide whether to review the decision.
One other way a decision can be overturned is if on review we see that the bowler had bowled a no ball. That's where their front foot was fully on or over the popping crease when they released the ball. The popping crease is the line that you see that's parallel to the stumps. Other than being run out, a batter can't be out on a no ball and in most match types the batting side gets a free hit on the next ball allowing them to play a no risk shot. Let's see that in action. First, the bowler will bowl a no ball, which will be signalled by the umpire like this. If you see this in time, you can switch it up and play a big shot. Then afterwards, the umpire will signal a free hit. Take a swing. Oh well, missed an opportunity there. 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 Great job. OK, so now you've got the basics of batting down, let's have a go at bowling. Let's start off with a fast bowler. There are a number of different tactics that you can use as a bowler to try and get a batter out. However, pace bowlers generally do one of two things. They'll try to use raw pace to attack the stumps, try to get the batter to play a bad shot and either edge the ball or hit it up in the air for a fielder to catch. A basic delivery is straightforward. First, Move the bowling target to the area that you're aiming for using the left stick, then press the button for standard delivery. Bowl in the highlighted area to proceed. Good job. Aside from standard deliveries, there's a variety of different ways the bowler can bowl. For a pace bowler, these include bowling swing, which tries to have the ball change direction in the air to cause it to deviate from a straight path, either in towards the batter or out and away from the batter. Cutters, on the other hand, cause a direction change on the bounce of the ball. They're referred to by where they cut from, so an off cutter moves in towards the right-handed batter and a leg cutter moves away. You can access cutters by using the alternate deliveries toggle. As a quick reference, the buttons on the controller are positioned to the direction that the ball will move. Select a cutter or swing delivery to continue. Well done. Once you've selected a delivery, the next step is to actually bowl the ball. For pace bowlers, there's two parts, the jump and the release. Press the chosen delivery button again at each point. Once you've selected your delivery type, a timing meter will show and a line will move downwards. Hit this in the green zone for an ideal jump input. This will then change to the release input and the line starts moving upwards. 
again hitting the green zone for ideal input. Great work. Inputting timing in the red zone will result in a no ball as the bowler will mistime their release and have their foot land over the line. Bowl a good or ideal timing delivery to continue. Great bowling. Alongside this type of no ball, you can also bowl a no ball if you bowl too high above the batter's head too many times in an over. Deliveries that bounce high, or bouncers, can be a useful tool for a pace bowler as batters can misjudge the amount of bounce and play a poor shot. A lot of wickets fall this way, so it's important to be able to use them without them becoming no balls. Bowl a bouncer by selecting the bouncer delivery and then aim the bowling marker in the highlighted area. Good job. Aside from no balls, the bowler needs to also avoid bowling wides. The area that counts as a wide differs based on whether it's a test match or the more narrow margin for error in limited overs matches like 2020. If the ball passes a batter outside these ranges, the umpire can signal a wide. This will result in the batting side being awarded a run and needing to bowl the ball again. Bowl a ball that's not wide to proceed. job. Right, let's continue. So far, we've bowled with a pace bowler. So now let's try out a spin bowler. But first, we'll need to select one. You can change bowlers at the start of each over by opening the tactics menu prior to bowling the first ball. First, press the button for quick tactics to open the menu, then highlight the manage bowler row and press the button to open the manage bowlers menu. The Manage Bowlers screen will give you information about the bowlers you have available, including their skill level rating, the number of overs they've bowled, their bowler type, as well as their fatigue level. At this stage, we want to select a spin bowler. Now, spin bowlers are labelled as leg spin, LS, off spin, OS, slow left arm orthodox, SLO, and slow left arm unorthodox, SLU. Select a spin bowler from the list. Nice. Spin bowlers are good because they can deceive the batter with the amount of movement in the air and off the pitch. They bowl mostly slowly, but because their balls spin in unexpected directions, it often tricks the batter into making a bad shot. 
They were traditionally used later on in an innings as the ball and pitch gets older and more likely to spin further. However, spin bowling is increasingly used during shorter form matches as a way of slowing the ball down, giving less room for the batter to hit big shots. Let's try bowling spin. The controls are similar. Move the marker to aim and then select the delivery and wait for the timing meter to be in the green, then hit the delivery button again. Be careful when aiming, however. You're targeting for the point the ball will bounce. Spin bowling can then go quite significantly to either side. Bowl a ball that isn't wide to continue. Nice. Bowlers can take different approaches when bowling. This can be used, for example, to adjust for the amount of spin that the bowler's getting. Change your bowler's approach to go around the wicket by pressing the directional button to move the player onto that side. Bowl a ball from around the wicket to continue. All right, you seem to have the basics of bowling down now. Let's try out fielding. First, we'll try taking a catch. The batter will hit this ball straight to your fielder. When the indicator pops up, use the left stick to move the marker into that circle, then hit the button displayed when the marker lights up green. To get opportunities to take catches, you'll need to make sure you have fielders in the right places. Where you place your fielders can depend on the progress throughout the match. At times, you'd put them near the boundary if you want to prioritize stopping boundaries. At other times, having lots of close in fielders can get you wickets. On this occasion, though, we want to put a fielder in the slips area to maximize our catching opportunities. Open the field editor using the button then we want to move a fielder to first slip. Select a player from the list, then using the left stick, move them until their pin is over the first slip position and hit the confirmation button. Nice. This time we're going to take a slips catch. These close in catches can give you less time to react and take the catch. There's one extra thing though. After taking the catch, your player will need to appeal to the umpire. As unlike outfield catches, they might not be immediately sure if the batter hit the ball or if it just hit their body. Umpires wait for the fielding team to appeal a wicket before making their decision in these circumstances. Also, just quickly, you also need to appeal if you think a player may be out to LBW. So to summarize, if you think the slips or wicket keeper have made a catch or the bowler has got a wicket via LBW, use that appeal button. Take the catch and then press the appeal button to appeal. Successfully dismiss the batter to proceed.
Earlier on, we had you running between the wickets to avoid being run out. Now, let's learn how to get run outs yourself. If a ball is hitting close and there's an opportunity to run the batters out, the direct hit throw mechanic will show. Run the batter out to continue. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no. oh no, they made it back in time. Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time. Oh no, they made it back in time. 
Move the marker as quickly as possible to make the throw in time.